Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexander Herzig. I'm a release manager in SUSE for SUSE Linux Enterprise in general. I was doing some products since I'm part of the company in 2017. I was working for Container as a Service Platform. Um, I was the release manager for SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 SP2, and I'm currently tasked with taking care of SleepyCI. And this is the agenda of my talk for today. Um, so we'll introduce you to what SleepyCI is, how SleepyCI makes managing containers for you easier. I'll show you a little bit about the SleepyCI roadmap. Uh, this includes what we have and what is in front of us. And we're going to introduce, or I'm going to introduce to you the SleepyCI lifecycle. This is a, a new topic here from us because we're taking extra care um, for the base or for the containers in SLES. So let's start with what SleepyCI is. Our vision for SleepyCI was to have a drop-in replacement for unsupported images in Docker Hub. That means for for developers, it might be good if you have your own project um, having containers that you can pull from Docker Hub, but our customers are looking for containers. They get report to if they run into issues with, and so SleepyCI covers this. So you can pull BCI containers from our registry, use them, I'll come to that later, they are free to use, freely available as images from Docker Hub, but if you and your company need to have professional enterprise grade support, you can get that from us. Um, the Sleep BCI containers, they come from a secure and stable base. Um, we have latest tooling in there. I will go into that into detail since the containers and the packages we have in Sleep BCI are coming out of this less repository. We're shipping in the containers everything the developer needs for development testing and deploying the containers. So we, we deliver you a complete package that is ready to run. Yeah, it works out of the box, as I said already. So you just pull them, pop them and pull, and can start using them, deploying your applications in there. As said, the SleepyCI comes in different flavors. And one of the flavors is that we have language stack containers, which we keep up to date with the packages or from the packages that we have in, in SLES, in our SLES base. Since SLES is security audited by the security team, also the BCI containers inherit that security scanning. So everything that comes shipped with SLE BCI is also available in the SLES base and therefore receives all the, all the attention from our security teams to make them secure and stable. The images are shipped with a newly created EULA that we have made especially for that case that allows you to freely distribute the container images. This means you can use our container, you can put your application in it, and you can distribute that further without any costs, it's all free. As it is the fashion for SLES, these container images are available for our four major architectures, which is x86-64. We have them for ARM, PowerPC, and for the Linux, or for the IBM Z system, the S396 architecture. Of course, our containers are also FIPS compliant if the host is FIPS or is run in, in FIPS mode. So for these special use cases, you're covered here. And also, if you have a registered system which is in a description or in a subscription, uh, your SLES credentials are automatically used here. Let's take a quick look of how the packages that we use or how the containers that we use uh, for SleepBCI um, get the packages from. 
So it is our very strict policy that every package that we put into our containers are coming from the SLES repository. With that, we have all, all the features, all the stability, all the security, all the testing um, contained in our containers. But since the SLES repository is subscription-based and you have access to it only if you have um, a SLES subscription, we have created the so-called SLE BCI repository in, into which we re-release over 4,000 packages out of the SLES repository into the SLE BCI repository, which is freely available. As I said, we have over 4,000 packages out of the SLES base in there, and it is our own policy also that all containers uh, that we build uh, receive the packages out of the SLE BCI repository, repository. There's no way around. We, we exclusively take packages from there to, be, um, to benefit from all uh, the security and testing and uh, conformity and stability that SLES offers. We see different use cases for different users. Uh, for the developer use case, what we offer is that we build and test uh, containerized applications, so we do it ourselves. Or if, the con uh, if a developer or you as a developer need to put something uh, on top of our language stack, we have the right container for you, be it in Python or in other languages. We always keep the tooling for that up to date, or you have the latest tools, you have the latest um, language stack, we keep that up to date. All the packages, all the package updates that, for example, come from upstream into, into your Python, Python stack will be routed through through the containers, and the container will be updated if there's um, updates needed. Our containers are stable and reliable, and come from a stable and reliable base that doesn't break. So we as I said before, we are using the packages and the technology that is already in, in SLES and can, can benefit here, and you can benefit for your applications or your projects from that stable base that is constantly monitored, updated, security updates applied, and constantly tested by our QE teams. And the biggest benefit is, if you want to start that, especially for the OpenSUSE community, is also it is available for free, and you can redistribute it without any restrictions. If you're an operator, um, the use cases we see that might be useful for you is that, we, that you can deploy pre-built application containers. Some of our customers, customers um, they came to us and asked if, you have, if, if we have something for their scenario and said, yes, we are working currently on exactly that. We can deliver you pre-built application containers that have a Python stack for you or that have a uh, .NET stack for you already installed and we can provide you with support for that, and they were, they were looking for a solution, didn't know we have it, but we had it, and um, yeah, we started making business, business with them um, because we had that right on time, what they were looking for. As an operator, you can be confident that the containers you deploy in your organization are security audited. I'll come to that in a, in a later moment. So um, we give you the, the confidence here that uh, we have enterprise grade um, security audits on our containers. And of course, our containers work with um, your Kubernetes distribution. We are testing Kubernetes distributions of, of many kinds and varieties, so it's granted that this works. For enterprises in general, or for enterprise architects, the BCI containers are, are available or ready to migrate your traditional workloads into containers needlessly. So if you have uh, use cases where you probably have um, oldest, older Python stacks or so, we can, we can containerize them and you do not need to take care of them yourself. You can put our containers into your release pipeline, into your CI pipeline, and build always on the, on the latest stable tested um, container. SUSE is known for having very strict security certification and compliance requirements. Our containers fulfill them, so it is not only uh, FIPS, but our, but our containers um, and our company provides a lot of security 
our security uh, certifications and our containers um, inherit them, of course. Yeah. Also, if you need to, to avoid a vendor login, you can containerize your, uh, your application and can the BCI would be the answer for this case. And our containers support a variety of workloads, so if you need containers for your, for your mainframes, if you need containers for your, um, uh, for your um, microservices, we have, the, we have the right answer for that. Just to sum it up here, again, why should you be using SleepyCI? If you want to have a stable base image that is constantly taken care of, SleepyCI would be the answer for you. If you want to go with the, with the del latest development tools, we package them or we put them in our containers, and they are available. If you're, if you're looking at Python, Node, Node.js, or, or .NET, for example, we, we take care that we have the latest and greatest in the containers for you ready. Um, you must not use containers which have known uh, vulnerabilities. I'll, sh I'll showcase to you that later, but our containers are, are monitored and our containers are also shown on the CVE page of SUSE, so you can look up if, um, our, if you're the container you're using is affected by a CVE, you can see if the container is, is being in progress or it is maybe even not affected of the CVE. We support you with that. If, you have a, if you're running your, your host in FIPS mode, the containers are enabled or are aligned with um, running FIPS compliant, so it's plug and play here. You can, um, you can continue having your, your FIPS mode enabled. Our containers are deployed and built in different architectures. I said that before, for the four most known architectures, x86, Power, ARM, or S390X for the IBM Z system. We have the containers for you if the package is allowed. So for, for example, one, one downside, or not downside, but one limitation is we provide .NET runtimes and environments. They're only offered by Microsoft in uh, for the x86 architecture, of course, then it's only, uh, the, the container's only available for x86. For generally, all our containers are multi-arc. We guarantee also that what we deliver is, is stable. Um, this is done by our SUSE QE department. Um, we have automated testing pipelines that run a variety of tests. We have a huge test matrix to ensure that the containers run on different hosts that we run different container versions of different hosts, also on, on third-party hosts. I'll come to that later. So a quick TLDR for you. Our containers are open, flexible, they're stable. We have secure container images that are based on our uh, SLES platform. That they are freely available without any restrictions, I think is the biggest ben uh, benefit also for the community. Um, since you have no re subscription required and you can, use, you can use them right away and you can distribute your, your code or your application freely with our containers. With LibreCI in, in, in general, we are looking especially to support developers, operators and enterprises. We have them in focus for this product. The BCI um, containers, they come in three, in three flavors. We have a general purpose set of BCI containers. We have a growing number of language stack containers and it is not really BCI, but we have it. We, we start making other application containers. So we, for example, for, for SLES, we have containerized RMT or we, we started containerizing 3890S and it is, it's a growing number of applications that we deliver and with the projects we have ahead of us, this number will, will grow significantly. Let's talk quickly about the Sleep BCI EULA um, that comes with the container. I've put an excerpt, I put an URL for you if you want to read the full EULA, but here's an excerpt for the distribution license. So we as a licensor grant you um, a perpetual, in irrevocable, non-exclusive worldwide license to, reprodu uh, to reproduce, use and distribute your BCI container, including 
all the installed packages from this LibCI repo um, of the software that is listed here. So you're really, really free to use um, everything that is in the repository on the container. You can distribute them for free. This LibCI repository has currently around about 4,000 packages, which is the vast majority of packages we have in SLES. And they are freely available here for you. So usually we have them behind a subscription that you only can access this repository with a SLE subscription. But from the SLE BCI repository to be used with um, our SLE BCI containers, you can use this for free. Excluded for these packages, or we are only excluding packages from this repository which make no sense for a container, um, which are just a kernel, some installers, desktop or hypervisors, they make, no, they make little to no sense in, 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 for SleepBCI, so we have excluded them. But whatever makes sense for containers is available in this repo. You can access this, I'm not getting tired of mentioning that, as use that free, uh, without a subscription. And they are already automatically included in the container, so you, can, you have plug and play with the containers. You, you can install your container and you can pull the images that you need, or pull the packages that you need into your container to build uh, on top of our containers. Let's talk about the different flavors of base container images we have. So we have the BCI base container, which is similar to the SLE 15 uh, base container. It is it's literally, it's the rebranded container, so it's the same container. We, we just put them to our offering, so this is, this is the most the most uh, suitable container if you, if you have any general um, application that you would run there. Further, there's BCI Minimal and BCI Micro. I will come to that later, what exactly is included in there. Um, we have a BCI init container. This is a container that contains systemd, so if you have any com uh, application that requires systemd, we have that. And for the sake of having a very small container, we are also releasing uh, we have released a BCI BusyBox container, which is very small, and it is GPLv3 free. So we had a request from some of our partners and customers. They needed GPLv3 software or containers. We have created uh, the, the BusyBox container for that purpose. On the language stack, we started with releasing different versions of Python, Node, we have Rust there, we have Go there, and we have as a special request from a, from a customer, we have the .NET stack in our containers available. On the application side, we started with containerizing, and to be, to be very sure, um, we have put them in a Helm chart, or in a, in, in a Helm deployment, we have RMT, so if you want, if you want to run RMT in a, in a container rather than having an RMT server somewhere around, you can use, use that in the, uh, very easy with the Helm chart. We have also documentation. We've added the, the documentation. If you're not so firm with Helm, uh, we have that available so that you can run RMT in a container. As per customer request, we, uh, we added 3890S in a container. And only yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, on Monday, we released uh, the performance copilot as a container. And here we made, here, already, here we derived from our system from our BCI init container because PCP needs a system D. Here's a quick overlook of the catalog, what we have so far. So you see we, have, we offer BCI base or the BCI containers since 15 SP3. So here's also an overview of what tags we have here. So we have 15.3 15 .3 and 15.4 versions of the language of the base container. And then for .NET, we have the 3.1, 5.0, 6.0 .0. versions. For Golang, we have 1.16, 1.17, and 1.18. And and of course, we are, we are following up with, with newer releases. We have Node in, the, in version 12, 14, and 16. OpenJDK, we have in version 11. Um, Python in 3.6, 3.9, and 3.10. And Ruby in 2.5. In the pipeline, we have also um, Rust, coming in the pipeline, we further have PHP and Perl that will be, will be coming soon. 
Let's look at the different containers and what, what is really contained in them. So starting with the BCI base, this is our most versatile general purpose container. It comes with RPM in the RPM database. It has Zipper installed, and with that you have access to the SLE BCI repository. It is pre-installed, you can access it directly and simply via that. With that, I said for over 4,000 packages are available with that directly, and it can be used as very versatile uh, to run your um, workloads containerized with this flavor. Next is the BCI minimal container, which is a slimmer version of BCI. We made that possible with um, excluding Zipper from it, but it still contains RPM. It is suitable if you're deploying similar applications that are already available as a RPM package. So here we, we are just offering, we made that so that there's a smaller container for small applications. If you need an even smaller container, the BCI micro container is suitable for you. It is, as I said, even slimmer as BCI base and BCI minimal. It comes without RPM and zipper, and the deployment target for that is static binaries or other pre-built artifacts. BCI init is a little bit special. It comes with system D pre-installed. It is useful for scenarios that require system D for managing services in a single container. For BCI init, the, the current um, setup is that it only Popman supports running it uh, thoroughly. So we tried to run, make it run with Docker, but that didn't work. So um, if you want to run this container, um, you need to run it with Podman. And then we have the newest member of the family is the BCI, BCI BusyBox container. It comes with the most basic tools only and uh, that are provided by the BusyBox project. We did that and for the benefit of having a very small container. We have no GPL v3 licensed software in it. This was a requirement from, our, from one of our customers. Um, with BCI BusyBox, you have to take care because your scripts that are written for a system using the new core utils, you may require to modify your scripts uh, to run with the BusyBox. Let's compare the, the sizes of the containers. Um, don't, point, don't pin me down on the numbers because they're always changing um, back and forth. So the BCI, uh, the base image is around 94 megabytes. The BCI minimal, as I said, is a little bit small. It's about 42 megabytes. BCI micro is only roughly 26 megabytes and our BCI BusyBox is even only 14 megabytes. So we have use cases for our customers uh, having very small containers as well. Quick overview, what is Again, what is provided in here, so everywhere, of course, is glibc. We have CA certificates in there, in the RPM database, and then we are, we are starting to narrowing down. So core utils is only available in the first three where BusyBox comes on its own. Bash is not included in BCI BusyBox because we needed to be at GPLv3 list. And then the RPM binary um, is only available in BCI base and minimal, and be in the, the, the zipper stack because of its size is only available in the BCI base container. Quick look at our registry. If you don't know it yet, we have registrysuse.com. Um, I've taken you a, a, a screenshot here where you find our containers so you can browse through our offering here. We're having the containers in there as, as, a, as a white tile. And if you're looking into the containers, you can even go down and see which packages are shipped with each container. So you have, you can, you can see, or you can, you could even look up the source code. So we have connected this with, with OBS. So you can, you can see everything in the container. You can, um, yeah, we are fully transparent here. How makes, how does SleepBCI make managing your containers easier? First of all, we are taking care of security. Our container, our CVE scanning, has been extended. So on our CVE pages that is linked here, you can look up if a CVE that you are think you are troubled with is within of one of our containers. So you can simply look up your, uh, the CVE in here. 
we have integrated OVAL and C CVRF data that are used by Trivi and uh, Tenable Noises to, um, to have that scanning in there. Uh, we are providing all the data, so um, the scanning with, uh, with that works. Um, currently, we are also integrating new vector scanning. That's a company we uh, acquired some months ago. So we're currently in the process of also um, provide the, the stack of null vector um, for our container offering. Additionally, our images are signed with Notary V1. Notary V2 um, is currently in the making. We have the signing with uh, the Red Hat Potman uh, style of signing, and we're signing our containers with Cosign. So this is also all available, and of course our containers, since they are built in the internal build systems, they have also been signed with the SUSE key. This is a, a screenshot from the CVE page um, where we have integrated our containers. So here you see where um, BCI Node.js 12 and 14 was affected by a, um, by a CVE. And here you can, you can look up if, if you are affected, if your version is affected, if it is already being tackled by us or even probably even uh, solved. Let's talk about compatibility of the SLEBCI um, containers. Of course, of containers are um, compatible with SLEB and Tumbleweed. But we're also testing and making sure that our containers run on Alpine, Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, or Fedora. Further, our containers, of course, run on Rancher. And by request, um, from our enterprise customers, we are testing and making sure that our containers run on the major third-party container host platforms, which is like Amazon, AKS, GKE, and EKS, so Amazon, Google, and um, Microsoft is, is granted, and we are also testing our containers, and we are ramping up our testing here um, when it comes to OpenShift. And of course, also our containers are um, compatible and run on Kubernetes if you run Kubernetes with a container D underneath it. Let's talk shortly about support. In case you need technical support, support you can buy a subscription, a SLES subscription, um, to get support for your container. Um, so you have to look out for an offering that is including the BCI um, support. Coming to our roadmap, what, is, what lies ahead of us? Which, which container updates can you expect? So as you see, we're currently, or we're looking out to include Rust 1.6, 1.61, 1 and 1.62. 1.63, um, we are looking out to, to have .NET packaged, um, the, newest, uh, the newer version of Go. We will be including Node.js 19, Python 3.11, and, and so on and so on, and we are extending um, the language stack accordingly and by requirement. Let's take a look at the lifecycle and what is special about the life cycles for BCI. Since we have, um, or what we call life cycle is, that is the time when, until our containers um, have their, uh, are supported. This is what we mean with our um, life cycle. We have different life cycles uh, for the BCI base containers and the language in the language stack containers. So we have different um, life cycles here, and I will go through that. So the BCI base images, which are I repeat, BCI base, minimal, micro, BCI init, and busy box, they are bound to a service pack. So with each service pack, we are releasing a new version that is built from the sources or built from the packages of the service pack. And with being bound to a service pack. Their, life, their lifetime is with the six-month overlap support uh, for the next service pack. So, for example, for our 15 SP3 um, base containers, they are supported until six months after the release of 15 SP4, so which is somewhere by the end of this year, and then you can switch to the 15 SP4 version, which has an extended or which, has, which is longer supported then. Yeah, as I said here, SP3 images are supported until six months after the SLE 15 SP4 
release and the SP4 images are then supported until six months after the release of SLI 15 SP5. With BCI language stack containers, it's a little bit different. Um, first of all, we, we see all the language stack containers um, service packless, so we're offering them and they're not bound to a service pack. You can take the container, of course, and run them on a different environment. So we made them, we made them um, without the restriction of a service pack. But we are looking um, at how long the, the language stack is supported, of course, upstream, and then how long the service pack, uh, not the service pack, the language pack is supported in SLES. And we offer um, support for that as long as the language pack or the language packages are supported in SLES. Um, I can already tell here that Node.js 12 has received end of life, or is going to re receive end of life um, six months after the release of 15 SP4, as well as Python 3.9, which is discontinued in 15 SP4. Oops, a little bit too far. And of course, and this is probably also very interesting for the community, we started in the open. So we consider um, OBS is our upstream. We are building or we are sending our code first to OBS to build our containers there until uh, then they are rooted into uh, the internal build system where we, um, where we build them and release them into, uh, through our pipeline onto our registrysuse.com. So if you want to contribute to the containers, I've uh, put the links here in this, in this slide deck, so if you want to download it, um, yeah, the repositories are ready, and uh, my colleague Dan is already very excited to work and review um, your work. And with that, thank you very much for your time.